What's happening guys? Uh, Kenny here again and today I've got another um, HRC testing video for you guys. Um, uh, so just to preface this, this is going to be a lot of knives in this video. Um, more than I usually focus on in one video. Usually it's between two and four knives um, in, in each one of these videos. But today because I'm a little backed up, I wanted to get pretty much two batches in one video. So I'm gonna be kind of skipping through some of the sections I'm a little more um, you know, informative about, like the PMI testing and stuff. Usually I go back and forth and show you uh, what, what it's supposed to be and what it actually is. Today I'm gonna kind of skip through that section a little bit. So you guys can always refer to um, whatever the knife steel app or however you go about it. I usually check both. I check the knife steel app and also I check either CPM or Latrobe or, um, you know, Bowler or, or whoever, whoever steel it is. I usually cross reference the knife app to, uh, the knife steel app to, um, the actual company's, uh, data sheet. So in saying that I'm going to go ahead and show you, well, I also want to preface this by saying I two of the knives that were tested um, aren't here, so I don't I, I can't actually show you the um, the divot in the steel and everything. But um, oh, and also I do want to just say right now, um, guys, uh, I know that you know I, we talk about Kurt on here a lot. Kurt's the guy who does the testing for us. Um, you guys know him as uh, J Cool G nineteen. Um, Guys, I love that you want to go and say hey to um, Kurt and thank him for what he does. Um, as far as Kurt testing other people's knives and stuff like that, just random uh, subscribers and stuff, um, he's getting too many knives now, guys. Uh, um, we're going to have to keep it kind of just the channels uh, testing the knives with Kurt. So if someone else wants their knife tested, you're going to have to pretty much go through either um, me or Gerald or uh, Outpost 76 or Super Still Steve or, um, uh, you know, like uh, Alchemy One. You have to pretty much go through one of us to get the knives tested by Kurt just because he's getting too many to test. So, um, yeah, sorry for rambling on here a little bit at the beginning. Uh, but these are the knives that I did have tested. Um, like I said, it was two batches. So... We have the Spidey Chef um, LC200N. We have the uh, Kaiser Gemini S35VN. Uh, we have the ZT Knives 0609 with uh, 20CV. Uh, then we also have, uh, what's the other one that's not here? Um, oh, uh, the PM2, uh, Spyderco PM2 in Crewwear. Uh, also have this Para 3 and M4. Uh, sorry, got it. Battery's dying on my uh, phone. Uh, and then also the last one that's not here is the Benchmade uh, Super Freak. Um, the 560BK-1, which has M4 steel as well. So there's two CPM M4s going up against each other here. That's going to be kind of the big one. I know everyone gives Benchmade trouble on their heat treat. Uh, Spyderco has been pretty good lately, but uh, Benchmade does, I mean, hasn't been as high as from what my testing's shown and also some other people's testing. So that's going to be an interesting one. I'm going to keep that one till the end. Uh, as you guys know, what I'm going to do now is flip it around um, and then we're going to see what the results are like uh, as far as the PMI gun testing and also the um, heat, uh, the HRC testing. So here we go. Let's see how they came out. All right, guys, so as you know, I kind of have my uh, my iPad here to show you what the numbers are like, um, if there's any discrepancy. Um, I do have the PMI sheet here, kind of showing you what is, uh, this is the elements on the steel. Uh, obviously, we're talking about the Spidey Chef first. So let's go ahead and talk about that. I will go ahead and show you this thing was hit twice by the HRC uh, tester. And uh, the PMI, let's go ahead and talk about, uh, well, let's talk about the PMI on the steel first. Um, this thing does line up with LC200N. We're a little low on the, um, on the molybdenum, but pretty much right in spec with what it should be. Um, this was, 
however, with the LC200N, I think uh, there was a little bit of a weirdness here with the antimony, which is a little weird. That's kind of weird for that to be in there. And then also uh, tin. These are two things that are kind of strange to be in the steel, but uh, I don't think, I mean, it's just very, very small trace amounts. I don't think it's going to hurt the steel, but it was a little strange, just a little strange on that. Um, also, there's copper in there. So there's just some things that aren't necessarily supposed to be in there, but they are, and I don't think it's necessarily hurting the steel, but it is something to pay attention to. Um, yeah, and then as far as the HRC on that LC200N, we are talking 58.1 on the first and 57.8 on the second. So uh, you're not stellar, but um, as we find with LC200N, uh, it does seem to come up on the low side. And as far as a lot of these um, nitrogen-based steels that are usually focusing more on the nitrogen, um, on the nitride carbides instead of the carb, I mean, I'm sorry, the nitrides instead of the carbides, um, they can tend to be like lower in the HRC numbers and still perform excellently at low numbers. So even though this would be ideal at like maybe uh, 59 to 61, uh, it, it really does work even in that 56 to 58 range. It still is pretty good uh, as far as performance goes, but obviously we want to try and utilize performance. So it'd be nice to see this up in the 59 to 60 range, but at 58, um, right around 58, it still performs excellently. And I can't say much bad about this example of LC200N. It takes a really fine edge and it also um, holds it really well. So I don't have a lot bad to say about it, even at 58, you know, even at 58.1 and uh, 57.9, uh, which is still that, or I'm sorry, 57.8, which is still really good, like close with the um, HRC tester. So that's good that it's, you know, not a very far spread. Uh, but with these nitrogen steels, guys, there is, it's, it's a lot tighter formation in the, in the, in the carbides, well, nitrides, guys. So, um, the grain structure is very fine in this steel, and that's why we can see a, a high performance at such a low HRC. So, it still performs excellently, even at that low HRC. Although, I would love to see this at 59, 60. That'd be nice. I, I would love to see that. So, you know, it's... Sufficiently done by Spyderco. Definitely not above and beyond on this. Uh, but I have seen, from what I've seen, that seems to be like the going kind of HRC on these LC200N and other nitrogen-based steels. Um, and then next, what we're going to talk about is the titanium. Uh, this is the PMI gun shooting the titanium. And as you guys can see, we do have a match. This is T TI, uh, that's 6AL4V titanium and all the numbers seem to match up right with what it should be as far as titanium um, that type of titanium alloys concerned with the six percent aluminum and stuff like that so that's where it should be um, and with the four percent right about four percent vanadium so that's what it should be and um, the chromium I mean I'm sorry the chromium the titanium count and everything's pretty good so that's why it does match um, and they do have titanium they use a lot of titanium where Kurt works so, of course, they're going to have it in their PMI gun. Um, sorry about the noise in the background, guys. But, yeah, so that's really nice to see uh, the titanium exactly what it should be and the steel exactly what it should be. Um, maybe a little low on the HRC, but not too bad. So, moving right along, we're going to go into the Gemini. So... With the Gemini, um, this is S35 VN steel. Um, I gotta remember where they say, oh yeah, here. Okay, S35 VN. And as far as this is concerned, uh, when, it, when you took it to the PMI gun, when Kurt did, everything is right there. Pretty much right where it's supposed to be. This is definitely S35, and um, if anything, the numbers are just slightly high but right there where they're supposed to be. Um, like that niobium there. <laughs> supposed to be uh, 0.50, but 
they went for the demonic version of uh, S35 VN, I guess. But yeah, so that was nice. Um, it's exactly what it's supposed to be as far as uh, S35 is concerned. Now, um, as far as the HRC on this guy, um, I'll go ahead and put the picture on the screen here. Um, I forgot to say that on the last one, but I did put it, I'm sure. Uh, as you guys can see, um, this did come up very low on the HRC numbers. We're looking at uh, 55.8 on one, and then 55.7 on the next one. Um, at least it's, you know, it's, it's not all over the place as far as that's concerned, but yeah, guys, wow, that is low. Um, they do not specify or advertise an HRC on their S35, so they're not like going against what they've said. But as far as what we know about S35 VN, um, it's meant to be in that, you know, 58 to 61 range as far as um, HRC goes. Uh, it seems to be like the ideal HRC, at least in production wise. Um, if you were going custom, I bet you could go higher. I even saw something saying like 60 to 62 or even 63, but I don't think that would be um, capable, especially in a production type of um, scenario. So I think 58 to 61 is that, that um, more of that you know safe range and they're not even hitting that 58 guys. They are far below that 58. Um, in sharpening, I didn't notice this thing sharpen up really easily, which makes sense. Uh, the burr did come off fairly easy and I didn't notice any like, like necessarily any like uh, gumminess in the apex but uh, it's just low, so it doesn't hold its edge very long, but it does take an edge very easily. Uh, I, I do feel like this is, they properly maybe tempered it and got the, the grain structure fairly good, but at such a low HRC, it's just not gonna perform like it could. Uh, so yeah, that's a bit of a um, disappointment there. But as far as, um, at least it's like nailing the elements, I guess. Uh, so it does perform okay. Although it's not going to be breaking any uh, records or anything, guys. So definitely not super stoked with that HRC. Although I will probably keep this knife just because my custom Anno um, job and the fact that this thing's so far off center. I don't think anyone's going to give me enough money to make it worth uh, passing it along. And I do like this knife overall. I really do love the way this um, carries and, and uses. So I'll probably keep it anyways. If anyone's super interested in it because they love the Anno job or something, let me know, but I'll probably keep it. Um, and then as far as the titanium's concerned, guys, <clears throat> you will see that we are um, finding, it did make a match. So that's nice to see. Uh, it was a little low in the aluminum count and a little high in the titanium count, but you know, that, that little variance there, it, it's pretty good. It's fine. And it's still made a match, so looks good. Uh, that's nice to see. So definitely using the right titanium in this handle. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it on the Kaiser. Like I said, guys, I'm moving a little faster today because I have six knives to go through. So yeah. Oh, not amazingly done Kaiser and I'm pretty disappointed with that HRC number. Although we are seeing actually a lot of Kaisers low on their S35. So um, if you want to look at the, again guys, I am going to add the data sheet uh, in the description here. So the data sheet that uh, David at Blade Banner keeps up with. Thank you so much, David. Guys, thank David in the, in the comments down below. Uh, David at Blade Banner, guys, go check out his channel if you haven't. But he's been doing the spreadsheet that's keeping all this uh, together. It puts it all in one place from all the different uh, heat treat uh, testing that's going on with Kurt. He's got it all compiled into one chart. And that, guys, is above and beyond because that's a lot of work making an Excel sheet like that and keeping up with it. And there's a lot of testing going on. So for him to keep up with it, it's it's excellent and definitely exceptional of him to be doing that. And uh, guys, Really appreciate that, uh, David, and I will uh, um, add a link in my description for, for that chart. But yeah, 
so moving on from the Kaiser, we are going to move into the 609. Yes, that's right, guys. This is the ZT Knives 0609. It's an RJ Martin design. And uh, this is CPM 20 CV. You guys can see where it's tested right there. So, yeah, as far as the PMI gun uh, shooting this guy, the 20 CV seems to be pretty much in line. Nothing weird, no, no, no extra elements or anything. Very good. A uh, little bit low on the chromium, but I mean, so ever so subtly. More vanadium than it's supposed to have. Uh, more uh, tungsten, a lot more tungsten actually. Um, niobium, which ne shouldn't really be in there. So yeah, L really solid as far as CPM uh, 20 CV goes. Uh, this is done by Latrobe guys, not Crucible from what I understand. So Latrobe is the one that's executing this 20 CV. Although I think CPM originally came up with the recipe. Not sure on that though, guys. You can always correct me if I'm wrong. If you know something I don't. So as far as that's concerned, we are definitely 20 CV. And as far as the number on that HRC goes, I will go ahead and uh, show the gun. I mean, I'm sorry, show the HRC tester indenting it. And you will see that this came up at 58 Point four on the HRC. Now, <clears throat> as you guys well know, if you've been watching my uh, videos for a while now, you'll know that 20 CV is supposed to be in that really like that 59 to 61 range. Um, and it should really be in that 60 to 64 range to really see, uh, excuse me, to really see what 20 CV is capable of. Uh, when you really get it up into that high range is when you're going to see the big difference between 20 CV and something like S30 or S35 or uh, LMAX or something like that. This is going to really come to life when it gets up into those higher HRC numbers. So seeing it at 58.4 is not stellar. I'm not like super stoked on seeing that. But in saying that, this is Banner 24-7's uh, knife, if you guys aren't familiar with the videos I've been doing on this. Um, this is my knife now. I did buy it off a off of uh, Banner 24-7. But in saying that, in use, guys, this thing still had a factory edge when I got it. And he used it a lot and put a lot of work into it. Just kept stropping it, and it seemed really stable. And then when I got it, I did more work on the factory edge, stropped it, did more work, and then finally sharpened it. This is the one and only edge I've put on it so far. And it is still really sharp, guys. Uh, very keen and I did strop it but I mean this thing is super super sharp still and really keeping a very good apex so what I'll say is even though it's 58.4 it's probably just excellently um, tempered and annealed so they probably did get most of the austenite out of there and and it's it's nicely um, nicely formed in the matrix I feel like because it is excellent, guys. R takes a really screaming edge, takes a good apex, and then also holds it very well. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was just really well done at 58.4. Um, so I'm not disappointed with this, guys. And even after I knew the number, I still bought it off of Banner 24-7 because I knew it performs fine for me. You know, it's it's definitely up to up to snuff, I feel like. And I love the knife enough to just overlook the fact that maybe it, it it was left a little low on the HRC number, but performs just fine, guys. That's where we talk about, it's not all about that number, okay? As long as the grain structure is, and everything's done well, you know, hopefully it's, it's, it's going to perform where it needs to be. So, yeah, that was really nice. Um, although, you know, a little low on the HRC. Uh, then going on to the titanium. This is where things got a little weird, okay? Um, it came up with a match for TI3AL25SN, um, which is a different type of titanium um, than the S, I mean, I'm sorry, than the 6AL4V. Uh, what this titanium 
it, it's 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 pretty much used in the aerospace and stuff like that. So it's still good tight. It's still a really good product. Um, it's more steel like than six uh, AL four V, and it has more properties closer to steel. And it's uh, it like for instance, guys. Let me show you really quick. Just a few comparisons here. So like you'll see here. Oops, sorry. Not comparing it to LC two hundred N, obviously. Um, so what you'll see here is we've got uh, so aluminum six point eight. This has zero aluminum. So that's where a big difference is. That's why the um, six uh, AL would be lighter. And I'm kind of perplexed on why it would be called three AL two five SN. But anyways, um, yeah. So it, and it has uh, zirconium which is going to make it a little heavier. It is, it's a steel type. This doesn't have any zirconium in it, in it. So from what I understand, and it's got more titanium, guys, um, and more vanadium. So in, in what I'm finding is this is going to just be a heavier titanium, um, which could make for the reason that this is a little heavier than their spec. I don't know if maybe they just got a titanium that was a little, like, a little off you know maybe they got one batch that would happen to be a different titanium it's a little strange though um, yeah it doesn't it's not like super noticeably heavier but it is heavier than their spec I don't know if they did something with a coating on their anodizing um, I'm pretty sure this is just a straight anodizing though so I don't think that would affect it but anyways a little strange on the titanium there from ZT uh, yeah, and otherwise, pretty happy with that result. Nothing that I'm too, uh, too disappointed with. Uh, moving right along. Next is going to be the PM2 in uh, Crewwear. I don't have that knife with me, so I can't show you that. But I will go ahead and talk about the PMI gun hitting it. And everything seems to be in line as far as it being Crewwear. Although, there's no silicone, silicon, sorry. Um, it's low in vanadium, and there's no magnesium, uh, I'm sorry, manganese. There's no manganese, which is very strange. Everything else is a little bit above the, um, the molybdenum's a little bit above where it should be, and the wolfram's above where it should be which is uh, tungsten guys. So those are above what it should be, but the fact is, is there's no manganese and silicon, which is very strange. And both of those are, would help with the annealing, uh, or I should say like the grain structure. Both of those things are, are um, there for deoxidizing and degasifying the steel and bringing the grain structure closer together in that, in that, um, as they're heat treating, it helps everything just really get close and tight together. So very strange that that's not there. And I did notice that the uh, crew wear performed really well, at least for me in the PM2 that I'm talking about here. So uh, in my uh, toughness test and stuff, it did perform really well. So even without those involved here, it seemed to perform. So I wonder what it would be like if the manganese and silicon was in there. Would it be even tighter grain structure and even uh, take even a better apex and hold it better? I wonder. Um, but anyways, as far as the HRC is concerned, I'll go ahead and put the picture on the screen right here. And you will see that this did come up at the 62 HRC, which is right there, right in range. Um, and excellent number for uh, crew wear. Uh, crew wear can be optimized within, uh, I think like 60 to 65 HRC really. Uh, up into that 65 is where it really comes to life, I feel like, uh, at least for edge retention. But uh, at 62 HRC, we're getting a really, really um, great all around steel, you know, that's gonna be super uh, tough in more than one way. Um, also have great edge stability and take a super fine apex. Um, at 62 HRC, I have no huge complaints about uh, crew wear. It, it performed great for me. So uh, super stoked with that. Uh, moving along, moving along. I'm going to go right into the Para 3 
uh, an M4. As you guys can see, uh, this does actually come up as a match because M4 is something that Kurt deals with at that shop. And as you guys know, uh, this is going to be put up against the the um, Benchmade M4 and the Freak. That's what's up next. And we're going to look right now at the elements in the PMI gun, uh, from the PMI gun. And as you guys can see, uh, the M4 is pretty much right where it's supposed to be. Um, these are all high, as you guys know, if you watch these videos before. Uh, the blue means higher, the, the pink means below what the advertise or what like the spec sheet shows. So molybdenum's a little high, all these things are a little high. Uh, you know, the manganese is a little low, but it's still with, you know, pretty close to what the spec is. Um, vanadium's really high, actually. Actually, vanadium and um, molly are really high. And there's uh, niobium, which isn't necessarily supposed to be in there. A very trace amount, though. And also, um, what else was there that was really high that I was like, whoa. Um, anyways, but the vanadium and molybdenum being high is going to make it extra um, strong. And the other thing I saw was, oh yeah, cobalt, guys. Cobalt's actually the thing that kind of separates M4 from Rex 45. So having some cobalt in there, I mean, it is a trace amount, but still, that's that's significant. Um that's going to make it have a higher uh, redness, like the, it's going to be able to take higher heat without messing up the tempering. Um, also, it would be um, a bit tougher. Cobalt helps bring all the, um, it helps kind of magnify some of the other elements. So yeah, that's really nice to see guys, but it does have some, also it has some nickel and copper in there, which, which are kind of for the um, degasifying and stuff like that. It helps with uh, some of the, helping the grain structure and just helping bring everything down. Uh, that's also what Molly does. For those of you guys that don't know, Molly also helps with the grain structure. It helps get everything smaller and tighter, which is gonna help with the toughness and everything. So yeah, really good to see as far as the M4 is concerned. And then as far as the HRC number, I'll go ahead and put that up uh, right now. And as you guys can see, that's a really nice number, guys. You're looking at uh, 63 HRC. That's really good to see. Um, that's pretty much where it wants to be. I mean, M4 can go all the way from 58 to 65. You know, 65 being more of its like edge retention and uh, edge stability type of thing. Whereas um, down in the 58, it has more, a little bit more ductility maybe. A little bit more toughness in that manner to like impact and stuff like that. But still, I think even at 63, it's going to be performing excellently in every every facet. So that's really cool to see. I'm going to go ahead and move along into the uh, Benchmade Freak because that's right where we want to see. And super stoked on that. Uh, as far as the Freak is concerned, um, I don't have that knife here. Uh, that knife is with Blue Collar Survival right now. Uh, thanks a lot. Big shout out to him for... Um, Shouting me out and congrats for 1,500 uh, subscribers, dude. Really stoked for you and thank you so much for the shout out. Uh, as far as uh, the Super Freak was concerned, uh, obviously this is M4 Steel done by Benchmade. Uh, the numbers are all right there, guys. Everything seems to be right on target. Uh, there were a few things like zirconium that probably shouldn't be there and niobium. But this does have a coating on it, so I think the zirconium is coming from the coating. I also think that's why some of these things are low because the coating's gonna block some of the PMI gun. Uh, so yeah, so the coating definitely affects the PMI reading. Although guys, um, I know that there have been some comments about this and in other places, not my channel, there's been people talking, you know, saying that the coating's gonna mess up the HRC number. That is not the case, guys. Um, unless the coating's extra thick, it, it really doesn't mess with the number too much. And that's coming straight from Kurt, guys, a guy who does this testing all the time. And I actually do, uh, if you go on Instagram, or if you guys are not on Instagram, there was a test that Kurt did where, maybe I'll show it right here, where he does the coating, he tests the knife with the coating on, then he scratches off the coating, then he tests the knife again without the coating, and you're gonna see that it's the same HRC number, guys. There was no variance from 
with the coating to without the coating. And you can see with the calipers that it actually took off, I think like, I think a millimeter of thickness on the blade. I, I can't remember specifically, but when I show the pictures, you'll see exactly what it is. But it took a significant amount of thickness off the blade. So that was a fairly thick coating. It still had no effect on the HRC testing uh, changing numbers. So, and that also is a testament to the, the, the machine that Kurt's using and with it being like, you know, really awesomely calibrated and coming up within, I mean, not even within 0.5 of, of what the reading was before it. So excellent, excellent stuff to see. As far as that M4 is concerned, it is definitely on target and it's definitely M4, especially even with the match on the PMI gun. And then I'll show you the reading on the HRC testing machine, the Wilson, and you guys will see that, oh my, 63 boys, holy crap. When we're talking um, M4 versus M4, this came up right in spec guys. Um, Benchmade does advertise what the spec should be on their M4 and it's 62 to 64. So they pretty much nailed it right in the middle at 63. And that is with the coating. So if there is any variance, it would probably come up higher without the coating. And yeah, 63 guys, that's excellent. Um, just really good to see M4 at a good HRC for what, um, what the steel is capable of. And I have noticed that both of these, you know, both this knife and the Super Freak perform excellently for M4. And just couldn't be happier with the, the reading on the uh, Pair 3 and the Super Freak. So I know you guys were really looking forward to seeing that, uh, that matchup between Spyderco and Benchmade on the M4. So yeah, really glad that they came up right in spec, right uh, where they needed to be. And really just comparable, like right where they, where they should be and both at the same HRC. So really great to see you guys. Um, I will flip this around and just do a quick conclusion. All right. <laughs> so in conclusion, I did get a lot there, guys. I know that was a lot jammed into kind of a tight, tight, um, you know, video there, um, even though it's still pretty long. So, uh, Findings are all pretty much good guys. I don't have anything. I'm super uh, disappointed with this time uh, the The titanium was a little weird on that ZT uh, Might be something I hit them up about and ask them uh, But really not something I'm that worried about uh, in in use. It seems to be Work really well. It does seem to take You know dings or Whatever you want to call it nicks in the titanium, but I think any titanium would, and if anything, this would take less nicks because it doesn't have as uh, much aluminum, it has zero aluminum in it. So if anything, I feel like the, um, the uh, 6AL4V would probably take more dings and be a little bit softer, but I'm not as familiar with the different um, titanium alloys. So I did try and read up a bit, but it's still, you know, unless you work with this stuff day to day, uh, the little idiosyncrasies between one alloy and another are a little harder to uh, judge with titanium, and they're not as uh, the sh data sheets aren't as clear and set in stone. So, saying that, um, not super disappointed with that, um, and in use, it seems just fine. Um, maybe a little heavier than the than the six AL four V would be. So that's interesting, but. Saying that, I uh, really appreciate you guys watching this. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was informative. I hope that you know the, the results were good for everyone. Um, I'm Oh, except for that Kaiser, guys. Yeah, oh God. I did, I said nothing that's super disappointing. Yeah, this is pretty disappointing. Um, I'm probably not gonna hit up Kaiser. Uh, I might actually just hit him up and say, hey, like this thing's way out of spec. Well, at least out of spec for CPM, uh, but it's pretty disappointing as far as that uh, HRC number goes. I, for, I almost forgot about that. But yeah, other than that, guys, everything's pretty much in spec, what it's supposed to be, and I'm, you know, glad about that. But thanks a lot for watching, guys. Thanks, big thanks to Kurt. 
Um, thank you for all you do. Um, everyone who wants their knives tested, hit me up or hit Steve up or hit one of us up to see if we can get it to Kurt. Otherwise, it's he's just got too much going on to be like have a bunch of subs just sending him knives. So thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate everything. Big shout out to Kurt, J Cool G19, and Blade Banter. David, thanks a lot for everything you do. Thanks for watching, guys. Later.